Orson Welles, writing in an airplane, reminds us to use navigating tools within Word. Navigation pane is a powerful tool that uses styles that we've already added to mark heads and subheads to help you or your reader find what they quickly want while in Word. It's kind of like links on a website. It starts after you select specific text like a headline, subhead, or title as a type of style. Once you set it as a style, all these tools come available to you. Then under the View tab in the Show section, click to turn on the navigation pane. It stays on until you turn it off again. It appears on the left with all the headers listed that are now links back to the header in your document. Essential if you have a long document to comb through. If you have 25 chapters and you want to quickly go from one to the next, you have to use this. Let's see it in action. This makes your linear document act more like a nonlinear web page or even a video game. It's great for navigating throughout your electronic document while you're in Word. Have you noticed all the red squiggly lines in this document? You see those? <laughs> That's spell check working hard to keep you from making a boo-boo. If it is the correct family name, for example, right-click and under spelling, click Add to Dictionary. It is now added to your entire office spelling bucket for all the programs. Make sure it is cor correctly spelled first. <laughs> We've been talking about navigating your electronic document. What about after it's printed on paper? Another essential for navigating, this time on the printed page, is pagination or adding page numbers. It's a good idea to use page numbers when you have several pages. My cursor is currently on the first page of 21. See the in the corner there? The rule with page numbers is to start numbering on a right-hand page so odd numbers, one through five, always fall on the right side of a spread. And even numbers, two, four, six, eight, are always on the left. Yeah, you may have to add a blank page to ensure that. Lulu.com book creation guide also tells us use formatting options like page breaks to control where your content is on the page. Avoid using hard returns, that's enter, 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 or paragraph breaks, like when you click enter, as these may cause a shift in content when exporting to your PDF. So how to add a page break. Here's how. So you can start text on a new page without hitting enter, 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 enter. <laughs> to insert a page break, click just before the text that you want on the new page. Then hit control, enter. That's my favorite way to do it. Scroll down to see the content has moved to the next page. You can also find it on the insert tab. I just remember control enter. That's one of the ones I have memorized. I probably have 15 keyboard shortcuts memorized in Word. That's one of them. <laughs> in case page break is not working as expected, show the code. In the home tab, in the paragraph section, click the show hide icon. Oops, I didn't need three of them. <laughs> you won't see those until you hit show code. But if you have three pages in there that you didn't want, that's probably why. You just hit that button again, turn it back off. Some pages do not need numbers. The front and back covers are not numbered. Plus, initial content you may add, like a forward, dedication, or table of contents, will appear before the numbered pages of the main content. Those initial pages can be labeled with lowercase Roman numerals, or not at all and Word will help you do them whatever you choose. Now we're at the first page of the main content to be numbered. Click the Insert tab in the Header and Footer section. See Page Numbers and click the drop-down. First, you can decide where on the page you want it to appear. Then, what format you want. Let's look at some of them. This is a top of page numbering option. You can see that it opened in the section header. Headers and footers are tools that reside on your document outside the main text, either at the top as headers or at the bottom as footers. Once you create it, a new toolbar opens, giving you lots more options like to create different header on the first page or on odd and even pages. 
When you're done in the header footer toolbar, click the big X to close it and get back into the main content. Here's another numbering option in the header. This one's pretty, but it takes up a lot of real estate, uses a lot of ink. <laughs> Here are some footer options for the bottom of the page. That one's my favorite. A new one and possibly too modern for a history book. Can you imagine Aunt Martha looking at that going, it's sideways. How am I supposed to read this? <laughs> this one's small and simple, but possibly too hard to see. You can always double click any number to select it and increase the font size or bold it. You can even change the font. Can you see my main text content is dropping into the footer area? Better fix it. Don't want that. To change the numbering format in the header footer tab under header and footer, <laughs> click page number to open the page number format dialog box. Here you can change from numbers to Roman numerals. Here you can add chapter numbers with a hyphen. And here you can start the numbering on a specific page. Click OK to save your choices. Lots of options. Here's a tip when you want different page numbering for different sections or chapters. Click where the new section should start. In the Layout tab under Page Setup, click the Breaks dropdown. Choose the section break that suits your needs, like Next Page. The new header can now be different from the previous header. It's now considered a different section.